Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for the webcast, Maximizing Your Gratitude Attitude. This webcast has been pre-approved for HRCI credit. Please be sure to attend the complete webcast in order to receive your credit. You will receive an email from hr.com within two business days. It will include the certification credit information. You may also log into your account and view the credits that you have received. If you have any questions during the webcast, click on Q&A in your webinar controls and type them in. And please feel free to use the chat box as well. And now it's my pleasure to turn it over to our presenter today, David Brooke. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you so much. Welcome, everybody. I think what I'll do is I'll start off with an introduction video so you know who's speaking to you today. I will mention to you, this is a very interactive webinar. And by that, I would like you to have, by that, I mean, I'd like you to have a piece of paper or a pad of paper and a pen, and you will need your smartphone too, because we do a texting thing here a little bit later. So, but let me start off with this video so you can all see who is presenting for you today. And this will tell you a little bit about me. David George Brook, also known as That Gratitude Guy, is a former Nordstrom store manager with a long history of motivating and inspiring people to be the very best they can be. David draws from his own experiences of learning to pilot a private plane, jumping out of planes, becoming a national champion hydroplane driver, flying off of cliffs, leaping over bridges, all to test what he himself was made of. He considers his greatest achievement as being the very proud father of what he calls his rock star sons. Brooke knew from as early as 19 years of age that he wanted to become a speaker to help inspire and motivate others. That drive became a passion to champion and illustrate the immense power of a gratitude mindset. With over 1,000 videos posted on YouTube and an equal 1,000 subscribers to his channel, that gratitude guy has become a leading influencer in transforming people's lives. His stories are terrific, very relevant and relatable. You inspired a room full of people with developmental disabilities and their families. David now travels the world speaking about gratitude and just recently completed a national coast-to-coast -coast tour. One of those events boasted the attention of 10,000 soldiers at Joint Base Lewis McCord in Washington State. Now an international best-selling author, David's written many books on the subject of gratitude, including the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal, and six word lessons to embrace gratitude. Studies have shown that when practicing an attitude of gratitude, people experience less aches and pains. Extensive clinical research has shown that individuals who are consistently grateful enjoy a happier existence and better relationships. So if better relationships, better sleep, better physical, mental, and psychological health sound good to you, then you'll want to pay close attention to what you're about to hear. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome that gratitude guy, David George Brook. Well, there you go. And uh, that's a, at hippo.com. Oh, hold on one attack. second here. React. Discover how proactive insurance Where can make that? being a homeowner oh, a whole man. lot easier. Get it. Uh, David, you just have to unmute now, please. Uh, thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Kathy. All right. So as I mentioned, if you'd have a piece of paper and a pen and either maybe a pad of paper, as I mentioned, it's very interactive. And so there's a lot of exercises and things. And if you can use the chat feature, if you have any questions and also the high five or the clap hands or the thumbs up or any of those kind of things too, because I get a lot of reactions from the people when I can see people on Zoom. It's great when it's on a webinar, I can't. So I love those, those little reaction figures, if you will. But I experienced a lot of traumas in my life. I went through a lot of different things that happened. My mom and died. My mom and dad died when I was relatively young in my 20s. And then my wife passed away when I had two young children. And just a lot of things that happened that I felt I'm going to have to figure out some way to deal with this. And I knew a lot of people. My wife, for instance, passed away of a prescription pill overdose. And I've had friends that have died from 
alcohol and smoking and drinking and all these different things. And along the way, I found gratitude and gratitude really helped me. So I'm going to give you some exercises and things today to show you how gratitude can really help you in your life and how it can make a big difference. But it starts off with how you look at something. It's so important how you look at things. You've all heard the thing about glass half full, glass half empty, that kind of thing. And I think that's very, very true, but it's a choice that you get to make every single day. You get out of your bed, you get out of the left side or the right side and so forth. And you can be positive or negative up or down, grateful, ungrateful, whatever it might be. Again, it's a choice that you make. And I think it's interesting. We're, we're so quick to anger, so thinking of like road rage or something like this, but we're very slow to happiness and really focusing on gratitude. I read a survey the other day. I do a lot of research around gratitude. And this was in, a, in the United States is 90% of Americans consider themselves unhappy. But again, it depends on how much and how what your view is of how you look at something. It is a choice every day. That's a choice that you get. Nobody else can make that choice for you. So it's so important. I live in Seattle and across the water is where Jeff Bezos from Amazon and Bill Gates lives from Microsoft and so forth. There's a floating bridge. And I had a foot race, went across that floating bridge a number of years ago, it was a 10K. And I was running across the bridge. I was about halfway across. It was pouring down rain and people were passing me and everything. And I thought, man, I'm not doing very well. And I looked in front of me and there's quite a few people in front of me. Then I turned around and looked behind me. And there's like just thousands of people all the way up to the other side of where they used to have a toll plaza. And up where those guys lived in Medina is a part of Bellevue. And as I turned around and I started running, I thought, this is what's interesting. All these people that are in front of me, if none of those people were here, I'd be in first place. I mean, think about it. If none of those people came, oh, I got a sore thumb or a sore toe, something like that, it would be like, you know, ah, gosh, I'm out front. So it depends on how you look at something. So let's, let's start with the first exercise. And if you can, when you do this, I'll have you do a thumbs up on it. And again, or a uh, clap hands or a, um, uh, uh, another one, of the, there's one more I'm forgetting. But anyway, here's what I want you to do on this piece of paper. I want you to write I want you to pretend for about 45 seconds, you're going to write two words, you are, Y-O-U-A-R-E, those two words somewhere in the top part of the paper. And now for the next 45 seconds, I'm going to give you, I want you to pretend you are your biggest cheerleader. You're the person in your life, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your husband, wife, spouse, whoever it might be that thinks you're the greatest. And for the next 45 seconds, I'm going to give you, I want you to write down Every word that you can think of that they would say to describe you, you are energetic, you are happy, you are talented. How many words you can think of, the more the merrier. So I'll give you 45 seconds to write as many words that your biggest cheerleader would say about you to describe you, go. Okay, and stop. And as you look at those words that they describe you, and as you now you wrote them down, it took you 20, 30, 40 seconds to write them down. As you reread them, tell me if you don't feel a little bit better about yourself. And if you do, give me a thumbs up or a high five or a clapped hands or whatever you can in the reactions, if you will, and or the raised hand, any of those type of things, because that can make such a big difference. And that's my exercise for telling people there's a thumbs up from Katie and some others and a lot of, oh, good thumbs up are coming in, clapped hands. And the whole idea from that exercise is to show you that's what embracing a gratitude mindset will do. That's a 45 second exercise. So you can imagine, we're going to talk in a little bit about a gratitude journal. I have that gratitude guys, daily gratitude journal here, a lot more thumbs up coming in. Thanks, Amanda, Erica. And it makes such a big difference. And this takes five minutes and I'll cover this in a little bit. It takes five minutes every day to write in the gratitude journal, but that gives you an idea of what it can do for you. And, and before I leave how you look at something, let's think about this last 18 months, the pandemic and 
COVID-19 and so forth. And I think about like just the silver linings. Yes, there was all sorts of sadness and deaths and all sorts of people that got sick. And it was very, very sad and very hard to deal with, of course. But at the same time, I think about, look at the technology. I'm sitting at my computer in my office in Seattle, Washington, and you're in all places across the country, the world, whatever it might be. And the technology, this Zoom thing I was telling Kathy has made a huge difference in my business and changed everything. All the efficiencies. I used to meet my buddies at Starbucks. Now I would drive an hour, spend an hour with them and drive an hour back. And now it's one hour and on Zoom, we have a cup of coffee and talk and I picked up two extra hours. And I think also the conveniences, I haven't been in a grocery store in absolutely months and every week or so, every five or six days, knock, 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 here's Amazon Fresh. So it's so important. And I think embracing gratitude and understanding the silver linings makes a big difference because it does help you to realign your priorities. It makes you really think about what's really important to you. And I think I think the community that we thought of as people that we are connected with made us a lot closer as a world probably than ever before. So, but think about that and how you look at things and just remember that aspect that it is a choice, which is so important. So next thing I want to talk about, you're known by the company you keep. And we've all heard the thing about one bad apple will spoil the whole bunch and that kind of thing. And, and I think about, they say, if you want to get better at tennis, play with a better tennis player, but it's so, so important to think about who you're hanging out with. And I think it was Jim Rohn said, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. But I sort of wonder if it's maybe time to reassess who you hang out with. And again, like a number of these exercises today, this is a very personal one. You don't have to share this with anybody, but just think about it. I know my father, unfortunately, took his own life before he had passed away. He was very negative, maybe the most negative person I ever met. And I'm one of the more positive people you're going to meet. And we're having coffee one day and he's, he's just complaining. He complains about everything. And the guys don't pay their bills that are his clients and the judges aren't right and all this kind of thing. And one day I looked at him as we're having coffee and I said, you know, gosh, you complain a lot. And he goes, did it ever occur to you? Am I like to complain? And I, I kind of took me back and I, I took a sip of coffee and I looked back at him and I said, okay, yeah. Did it ever occur to you? I may not want to hang out with you then. I know you're my dad, but you're so negative. Gosh, I mean, it's just, it takes a lot of energy to be positive. And so gratitude can keep that thing moving you forward. And I think also just knowing like, the tiers of friendships that you have. And that's why I think I just want to put this thought in your mind today about just maybe reevaluate some of the friendships that you have. And I saw something about the tiers of friends and they said, people have regular friends. There's like maybe 150 of them, good friends. There's maybe 50 of them you'd invite to a birthday party, supportive friends, 12 to 15 who would be upset if you died. I thought that was an interesting explanation and intimate friends. You have maybe five of those who would donate a kidney for you. So it shows there can be all sorts of levels of friends. But speaking of that, here's something I'd like you to think about. And I call this the association evaluator. And you could just make a note. You don't have to make the note of the friends right now, but here's what I'd like you to do that might help you to maybe reassess some of those friendships. There's four parts. This number one, Write down, and if you can't think of it right now, that's fine, but at least write down the question. One or two friends that maybe, just maybe, you should disassociate from. They're not necessarily good for you. Every time you're with them, you walk away, you don't feel as good. You think, wow, I wonder why I don't feel as good <laughs> like my dad. Maybe they're negative. So that's number one. One or two people, it might be zero, but one or two people you may want to disassociate from. Number two, one or two people you may want to just limit your associations with just maybe people that you know, I think of relatives. Sometimes they're always going to be your relative, but you just want to limit your time with them because again, it kind of maybe drags you down. And that idea of how you feel after you spent some time with somebody is so important. Do you feel better? Do you feel worse? Do you feel neutral? Whatever it is. So that's number two, disassociate number one, number two limit. Number three, this is my favorite one. One or two people you want to expand your association with. Just the opposite. Every time you're with that person, you feel better and you walk away thinking, I need to spend more time with them. And that's something that you can expand. And maybe let's have a regular Zoom meeting. Let's have coffee. Let's do something to stay more in touch than we normally do or what have you. So, and the important thing is, is that that's something that you think that ups your, your score, so to speak. So, and that's number three. Number four is one or two people you can mentor or be mentored by. 
You know, there's always people, there's something great. I've had tons of great mentors in my life that really made a difference in my life. And it really, really helped me. And then at the same time, I've had a chance now to mentor many people. And there's nothing more gratifying when somebody tells you what it meant to them, that you took them under your wing, so to speak, and really helped them out a lot. So then, and by the way, quick gratitude tip, when you're going to disassociate with somebody, you don't have to tell them to your face, I'm going to disassociate with you because the gratitude guy said I shouldn't say anymore. You just want to move on, but be polite about it. You don't owe somebody an explanation. All you owe people is common courtesy. I can't make it. Maybe some other time. Thanks a lot. Take care. Got to go. So it's so, so very important. So think about the company you keep. It can really, really impact your levels of gratitude and how you feel about that person in the mirror and the relationships that you have. Next, harnessing gratitude's power. Gosh, gratitude is so incredibly powerful. And what does it do for you? I think we've all heard about two people enter a hospital with the same disease. The person with a positive attitude lives, the person with a negative attitude dies. They've proven that over and over again. And I'll tell you how powerful it was for me. You might have seen in the clip or noticed in the clip that I learned how to fly when I was younger, been a pilot on and off for all these years. And when I was learning how to fly, this was like in the late 70s, early 80s, my instructor named Jay Diddy says to me, today's lesson was on instrument flight rules when you get into the clouds. And he goes, you're going to be grateful that you listened to me today. That's the exact word he used all these years earlier. And what happens is when you're in an airplane, he says, you're going to get disoriented sometimes. And your brain and your stomach are going to tell you something different than the instruments say. And he says, listen to me, David Brooke. It's going to be grateful for you if you pay attention to this very closely. Always believe your instruments. Always believe your instruments. I don't care what your brain or your head or your heart or your stomach or anything says. So sure enough, I said, okay, thanks, Jay. Got my license. And about six months later, I'm flying along with a couple of friends of mine. There's three, actually four of us. We're going down to the ocean for a little lunch. I get into a storm. All of a sudden, the plane starts turning and it's like in a 60 degree bank to the right like this. And I think I'm straight and level. So I've got major vertigo and I'm going to have a real problem. If it keeps going over, it's going to tip over, go into a spiral and we're going to die. So I hit the heading bug. The heading bug brought it back to straight and level. I look at the plane. It's now straight and level. What does my brain say? I'm upside down. I thought I was upside down. That's how bad vertigo. And that's what happened to John Kennedy Jr. And many people had gotten in airplanes and got into bad weather. But that literally saved my life. And I'll never forget when you said, you're going to be grateful that you listened to me because it's so, so very important. So just something to think about, about really focusing on listening to people and having those kinds of relationships too. Gratitude tip around gratitude daily power or harnessing gratitude. I love the idea of a daily gratitude walk. I walk eight to 10 miles every day. I listen to podcasts. I listen to audible books. I make notes. I call return phone calls and so forth. And I always have a specific subject for gratitude for that day. So neat, neat thing to do is you can combine your exercise, get those steps in. We've all got these fitness trackers. I got a Fitbit and then an aura ring and just different things. And it makes such a big difference. But Tie it in with something you're grateful for, and it makes exercise, which is so good for you physically, but also mentally as well. So next, the science of gratitude. There's a lot of people that think it's kind of woo-woo, and they don't really believe, well, wait a minute, well, how does gratitude work? And you say, I write in this gratitude journal, and it's going to change me and all that kind of thing. And so I think it's interesting. I did some research on this, and I do talk relatively fast, so I'm going to read this kind of fast, but it was interesting, some of these studies, what they said about the science of gratitude. Appreciating what we have measurably improves our relationships, our life satisfaction, our health, our sleep, and it improves our physical health, leading to fewer aches and pains, lower blood pressure, and less depression. Very key. Grateful people are more likely to take care of their health, exercise more often, and schedule regular checkups. Gratitude reduces toxic emotions like envy, resentment, frustration, anger, and aggression, and enhances positive emotions like empathy, caring, and sympathy. Too much of our time is spent pursuing things we currently don't have. Boy, is that ever true. Better house, better car, better wife, better husband, bigger, big, bigger boat. Gosh, people are always thinking about things they don't have. Instead, they should be focusing on what they do have. Gratitude turns what you have into enough. I'll mention that three or four times. Gratitude turns what you have into enough. Gratitude reverses that and realigns our priorities to appreciate what we currently have, as I was mentioning. Happiness is rarely constant. So although happiness is a fantastic goal, 
Gratitude for the tools that get you there are more important. How easily we can lose sight of everything we have to be thankful for when the circumstances of life become unpleasant. Think about COVID for the last 18 months. And lastly, we are our own worst critics and we hold ourselves to impossible standards and we continually compare ourselves to other. Boy, is that true to others. Science says that the more you choose positive and kind words to describe yourself, your health, your body, and your progress, the less anxiety you will experience. So, so, so very important. And that is just seeing that there's a lot of science to this and fewer aches and pains and this type of thing. So makes a big, big difference. So next, the power of a gratitude journal. So I have this, by the way, I have it in the, in the link, link in the chat, rather that gratitude guys, daily gratitude journal, you can get it on Amazon, but if you get a spiral notebook, I'm fine with that too. But this has a template that you can follow and it's all really designed to make it easy. It takes about five minutes a day. And there's the way it's laid out. This is mine. So you can see that I've been writing. I wrote in it early this morning. I never miss a day. But the way this is designed is it says, if I can get it to the camera here, but gratitude today. And then here's the, the day and the date. And then there's your daily number right there, which we'll get to in a second. And so then there's two lines for your daily events or your current events. So you don't have to have a diary. There's four or five lines for what you're grateful for. There's two lines for the highlight of your day, which is what the best thing was that happened to you. And we'll do a little exercise in just a second around that. And then on the right-hand side is the gratitude tomorrow. That's where you write things you're grateful for that haven't even happened yet because your subconscious mind can drive you towards that, that goal without you even knowing it. It cannot distinguish between what it thinks has happened and what has actually happened, which is cool. And there's a little saying on the inside of this journal that says, if you think about it, it's like a dream. If you talk about it, it inspires you. But if you write about it, it empowers you. So important. I am so grateful to Duncan McGowan and Kathy Keeler for inviting me to hr.com to do a speech. So it's just, it plants it in your brain and it makes such a big difference. And so, so let's do a little exercise with a gratitude journal. And again, I can't see your faces. So I would like you to give me a thumbs up. And after this is done, when I ask you this question, but here's what I want you to do, the daily number. So what's the daily number? We're sitting there for me, it's 621 AM on Wednesday, the 22nd of September in Seattle, Washington. So at this very moment, how am I feeling? One to 10, 10 is one of the best days of your life. And one is one of the worst days of your life, or at least a not very good day. And so this is a very personal exercise. You don't share it with anybody else. But what I want you to do is I want you to write down your daily number on, <clears throat> excuse me, on your pad of paper, and then put a circle around and you can do halves. You might be having a good day, seven and a half, eight and a half, nine, something like that. You might be having a tough day, four, four and a half, five, whatever it might be. However, you kind of take your temperature at this exact moment, I want you to write that number down and put a circle around. Okay, then next, after you get that number down, I want you to write numbers one, two, three, four, because you're going to write three, you're going to write four things total. And I'm going to give you 30 seconds for this. So let me put that back on the timer again to do this. Numbers one, two, and three, the number one thing you're most grateful for in your life, if you could only pick one thing. Number two is the second thing. And number three is the third thing. The numbers one, two, three, most grateful things you had in your entire life. And you could only pick one and then only two and then only three. That's one, two, and three, the things you're most grateful for. And then number four is what was the highlight of your day yesterday? So what was the best thing that happened to you yesterday? And think about that. That may take a few minutes. So let me give you 30 seconds to write those down and then we'll pop back and see how it did. Okay, there's about 45 seconds. And I always try to guess how people are filling these things out. But hopefully one, two and three should be pretty quickly be done quickly. But number four, you might have to think about what was that highlight of my day yesterday. So all right. So now that you've done that, again, I can't see you. So please give me thumbs up or, or clapped hands or high fives or any of those things in the chat when I ask you this. So now you read those four things, read them again, very slowly. One, 
two, three, and four. And then I want you to write another daily number at the bottom of number four and put a circle around it. The number could be the same or it could have changed after you write those, read those four things. So read them again real slowly, one, two, three, four, and then put another daily number and put a circle around it. Could have changed, could have stayed the same, whichever. Okay, and so now to the fun part, with a high five or high five or thumbs up or clapped hands in the chat, how many people's number from the top to the bottom went up? If your number went up, go ahead and put a high five or a thumbs up or something in the chat and let's just see how we did here. I'm seeing thumbs up, thumbs up to Amanda's, Evelyn, Yvonne, Lisa, Tina, holy cow. That was easy. Yes, that was easy. Because look at those thumbs up coming across, Erica, Amy, excellent. What a great audience, Teresa, Carolyn, everybody. So my question is, if that makes you feel that good or makes you have a thumbs up in a 60 second ep uh, example, what would five minutes do every day for writing in the gratitude journal? And I always think it's interesting because again, I'm on a webinar, I'm not in person, but when I was just in Nebraska last week to give a talk. And so when I'm done, people come up to the book table and I, I sign the books and sell them and so forth. And so here's a guy that just listened, there's a 90 minute keynote. And so he looks at this gratitude journal, is this your personal one? And so you can see, and here it is. And I've got the right here. I love to be transparent. Here's Wednesday, 922, hr.com talk. Here's, I wrote all the things I'm grateful for early this morning. I was up about 4.30. He takes mine, he says, is this your personal gratitude journal? I said, yeah, of course I write my own. He says, can I look at it? And I said, sure. And he like thumbs through it like this. And he goes, I said, don't look at it too closely if you don't mind. And so he kind of thumbs through it. And he goes, wow, you write in this every day. And I went, <laughs> Were you at the talk? Were you in the room when I just talked? God, of course I write in it every day. Gosh, it makes me feel better. Why wouldn't I write in it every day? I'm the, that gratitude guy for gosh sakes. So it makes such a big difference. And, and I will tell you, it's so important because to me, how you feel, if you have something you can spend five minutes, maybe 10, if you want to write a little bit extra in there, it makes such a big difference because I tell people all the time, I used to have one that said in the intro, the, the, that gratitude or the Brooker's gratitude journal. Well, now I've updated this to be that gratitude guys. I used to have my fraternity brothers and college guys call me from uh, around when I was in high school or college, I should say. And later on, I need a dose of the Brooker my, is my nickname. And so that was fine. They said, well, you're always so inspirational. You motivate me and you're, this is really before gratitude. And so they would call me and I'd, I'd fire them up. That's, that's just my nature. I just happen to be that kind of energetic, positive type person. Well, nowadays they call me and they go, I need a dose of the Brooker. I need, a, I need to talk to you, but I'm having a tough day. I said, great. Before I go any further, have you written in your gratitude journal? They go, no. Bam. I just hit the phone. I hit the off button. Just cut them off. And I go, wow. And like 10 seconds later, the phone rings and they go, uh, hey, Dave, I think we got cut off. I go, no, we didn't. I, sh I hung up on you. You have to go write in your gratitude journal. Gosh, you got to do something. I'll be your training wheels. But I'm not going to pedal your bike. You got to do something. Gosh, I think the good Lord gives you a toolbox, but you have to build the house. So, so, so very important. And I think that it makes such a big difference. And, and the thing that I would say to people too, the gratitude tip around the gratitude journal is this tip. And that is, it's better to do less than you hope for than nothing at all. So if you start out and you say, well, I listened to that gratitude guy and he writes every single day, you can do bullet points, you can do sentences, you can write a paragraph, whatever you do. I don't like to tell people what to write about in their gratitude journal, but I'll tell you, mine generally includes my health. It includes my two sons and includes my friends and it includes a lot of the people I get to speak to about how fortunate I am to meet them with my speaking career and so forth. So it's whatever you're grateful for and it can change every day. It can be different or whatever, but it's better to do less than you hope for than nothing at all. If you put in one word, in fact, if you heard nothing else I said from this talk today, if you just put one word, I'm grateful for my children, for my husband, for my health, whatever it might be, that's a start. So I will tell you, it makes such a big difference and I just you can see how it happens and and I know I was up at a, doing a talk in about 70 miles north of uh of Seattle in Burlington and you know I noticed one day I woke up and I was like a two 
now that you know how I do this, this number. And my mom had been manic depressive and, and bipolar, they call it now. And so I think I got some of that from her. And it was really frustrating. She used to do something to me that was so mean. When I was 16 or 17, she'd call me and this is back before cell phones, of course, and she would be on the phone, and she'd take these pills and she put them by the phone and she'd shake them and she'd go, you better come over and see me in the next half hour, or I'm going to eat all these sleeping pills. And I'm just like, oh, you got to be kidding me. I said, well, mom, she said, David, you need. And so, okay. So somehow she finally got lithium and kind of got straightened out and so forth. But um, it, it's interesting that I got some of that. Well, I didn't really want to take the pill. So to me, it's exercise, it's sleep, it's gratitude journal, it's taking my vitamins, drinking lots of water, hanging out with positive people, the, the more and more exercise, doing all these different things, meditation. There's so many things you could do to help yourself. And that generally helps. But that day I got up, I was at two and I thought, man, I am depressed today. What am I going to do? I have a talk to do at Burlington. And so I got my gratitude journal, went to Starbucks, had a cup of coffee, wrote in my journal, and that bumped me up to about a four or five. So that was a help, but I was still not doing very well. Drove up, did the talk. Gal comes up to me afterwards and she says, and I'm, she's standing in line to get the books. And she says, you just changed my life. And I'd never heard that before. It's quite a while ago. And I went, wow. I said, what did I say? She says, I can't talk about it. I'll get too upset. Just can I give you a hug? And she gave me a hug and she got her journals uh, for herself and a couple for her kids. And she went off to the car or she went off to this and I finished signing the books and so forth. And I went to my car and I sat in my car and I realized it was like a nine and a half now. And I'd gone from a two to a four writing in the gratitude journal to a nine and a half by having somebody tell me I changed their life. And all this with no offense to anybody, but without taking a drink, without doing any cocaine or drugs or pills or any of these things, which are all just coping mechanisms that people are doing to get away from the pain. And here's something that I'm offering to you, which is an extremely, extremely healthy coping mechanism in a world of an awful lot of negative ones and a lot of ones that are destructive and in some cases deadly. So, so, so very important. So, okay, next, I want to keep moving along here. And this is called, it takes as long as it takes, you can never give up. And there's so many things in your life that if you just stuck with them, you got them handled. And it's so important. And I know that when my wife had died, Dana had died, Connor was four, Kyle was 14, my two sons. And Connor had such a tough time with baseball and sports and the loss of his mother and he just didn't do well so he wanted to play baseball but he never was able to play he'd go and they do the the batting cages and the batting practice and all these different things and the fielding practice but he never played and so I just was sad because as his dad I'd come to all those places and they never they just never played him and I'd sit in the stands and so forth but when he was a little kid he wanted, he, before he started to play, he wanted to play. He was playing, trying T-ball and he's trying to hit the T and he's swinging the bat up by my face up here. And I go, what are you doing? Keep lowering it. He finally lowers it. He lowers it too far. He hits the T, the ball falls off the T and he goes, dad, I got a hit. <laughs> that's not how the game's played. But the thing is, is that I just said, okay, well, that's good for you, Connor. But he goes on and on and on and never plays. Finally, one day, May 31st, 2005, He's in a game and he's never played and they're the, it's the bottom of the seventh inning and there's a runner on second and third and they're down seven to six and there's no players left to bat. So the coach looks down there and says, who's left down there? And they said, Connor Brooke. And so he says, send them out. So here comes Connor. The first game he's ever played and he's swinging the bat like he's Ken Griffey Jr. Or somebody he thinks he's never even had a, a, an at bat. And so I'm in the stands doing the only thing I can. I'm just like looking up going, how about a bunt, please? You know, how about hit by a pitch or something? Anyway, gets up to the plate. He gets the ball, one strike when he goes to full count, three balls, two strikes. The next pitch comes in. He hits it, rips it down the third baseline, goes into left field. The guy from third comes in to score. The guy from second rounds third comes into home. The ball comes in. The guy comes in. The catcher's there. The catcher catches it. They all crash together and the ball pops out. And they win the game eight to seven. And he's standing out on second base all by himself with his arms folded like this. He goes, Dad, I got a hit. So I'll never forget it. And it was so important because he never gave up. And I just think it's so important not to give up on things. So it just is one of those things. So speaking of never giving up next exercise, here's what I want you to do. I'm going to give you 45 seconds for this one. And <clears throat> this is something I'm going to actually involve a little bit of homework, which I can't check on you, but hopefully you'll do it because it's a good, it's a good exercise. So 45 seconds. 
Sounds like a big excitement, but I want you to write as many things as you can in 45 seconds. The most memorable events of your life. Just write as many down as you can. The most memorable events of your life. Could be personal, could be professional, could be kids, spouse, children, trips, any number of things. The most memorable events of your life. Write as many things as you can in 45 seconds. Go. Okay, and stop. And as I say, that seems like that's a, a kind of a big assignment. But here's the assignment. I want you to promise me. Now, if you were in person, I'd have everybody raise their hand and promise me before they even know what the question is or what the statement is. But I want you all promise me that a week from today, September 29th, that you will do something. You will expand that list to one of three things, either a top 25, a top 50, or a top 100. If you have a lot more things, you're a little bit older like me, it's a top 100, but a top 25, a top 50, or a top 100. And when you do that, the gratitude tip is put it on a Word doc or an Excel spreadsheet and try to put it in order of priority. And when you do that together and then you type it up and then you put it in order, it's amazing how that'll impact you on a day when you're not having a good day. One day I was lamenting about the things I hadn't done. I hadn't gone to Greece. I hadn't done this. I went, I haven't ever been to France. I mean, I was going, wow. And then I started thinking, and again, you saw some of that in the video. I was a national champion, hydroplane driver, had my own airplane for 10 years, learned how to fly, all that. And I was thinking, what are you doing? Why are you, you're the gratitude guy for crying out loud. Why are you focusing on the things you haven't done versus the ones you have? And when I put that hundred list together, Oh my goodness, I keep it on my bulletin board. I have it on my desktop, on my computer. I can look at it. So anytime you're having a tough day, you look at something like that and it'll really, really help you. And it's just so important to have. That's why I try to do these exercises, the little UR card. By the way, back to the UR card, the very first exercise we did. And I said, your biggest cheerleader, you may want to put that on a little three by five card. I pass the cards out when I do them in person. I have people pair up and they change, they pick a partner and then they do it with each other. But you did it as your biggest cheerleader. You may want to put that on a three by five card and keep that handy too. how somebody sees your biggest cheerleader and you're having a tough day. You look at that card. You see what that gratitude journal will do for you. You see the top 25 or 50 or 100 things that are most memorable in your life. Any of those things, any time can knock you back up to a positive attitude from going down maybe the pity path or something like that. So that's a nice thing to do. So, all right, next, make room for gratitude. You got to clear out your brain. You can't have junk in your brain. And it's so, so very important. When you get in a car, you notice that the windshield is about four feet wide and about two feet high. And the rear view mirror is about two inches by about six inches. Keep that in mind when you think about your life. Mostly pay attention to what's in front of you. The windshield's like a hundred times bigger than the rear view mirror. You can glance in the rear view mirror occasionally. If you see black, uh, blue flashing lights, you may have to pull over. I get it. But mostly focus on what's in front of you. Glance there occasionally, learn from what's behind you, but mostly focus on what's in front of you. It's so, so very important. And, and the other thing too, that I think is really neat is how fast can you change? How fast can you do a new habit? How fast can you change behavior? You know, I've heard, I've heard 30 days, I've heard 60 days, I've heard two weeks, I've heard 90 days to change a habit, all these kinds of things. Well, I happen to believe you can snap your fingers like this and change just like that. And it's interesting because I worked at Nordstrom. You saw that's a big clothing store in Seattle in, in the uh, United States. And there's locations all over the place. And so, but when I was working my way up, I was managing the suit department and I would just kind of come and go and have my little briefcase. And, and one day I'm up in the lunchroom and this guy says, can I talk to you a second? And he says, yeah. And I go, aren't you Dave Brooke, the guy that runs the suit department? I said, yeah. And he goes, can I tell you what the story is on you in the, in the store here? 
And I said, um, sure. Yeah. Why? What, uh, what, what's he goes, everybody thinks you think you're really cool. You walk in here every day with your little briefcase and you got, you're winning all the contests. You're the top department. And that's how I got promoted to be store manager and so forth. But you don't talk to anybody. You walk around, you got your little shiny shoes and your little fancy tie and everything. And I went, wow. And I went, I was so impressed with this guy that had the guts to tell me this. And he says, you know, I just want you to know. And so I, what's your name? Steve. I said, thank you, Steve. I walked out of that lunchroom. I snapped my fingers and I said, you know what? I'm going to be the friendliest guy in this store. And I noticed the escalators, they kind of crisscross when they go. And the escalators don't go any slower than when you say hi to people. How's it going in your department? Hi, Mr. Smith. Hi, Mrs. Jones. All that kind of thing. I knew every single person in that entire store became the friendliest guy. And I did that with a snap of my finger. So it's really important. If you have behaviors that you don't really like, you can change them that fast. So really, really important. So think about that on something that you want to change in your life. And especially if it means like getting a gratitude practice every day, starting to write in the gratitude journal. By the way, I put a link in the chat for the gratitude journal. It's available on Amazon. There's a link and it'll take you right to the to buy it from Amazon if you'd like. So, all right, next, I love this topic. I love this module. Find yourself, find your talent, find your passion, find your purpose. I think it's so important. Some of these things we've talked about already involve you getting a connection with yourself, having a great relationship with that person in the mirror. The more you like that person in the mirror, the better your self-esteem, the better your self-awareness, the better your self-confidence, the better your entire life works. It's so, so really important. I think you've heard this a million times too. They say, put the air mask on you and then assist your child. You got to take care of yourself first. And whether it's the journal, whether it's hanging out with positive people we talked about, getting the foundation for a building, you're not going to make a high rise unless the foundation is super strong cement and dug down into the earth with the girders and all that kind of thing. So, so, so really important. And I think that when you really realize about the relationship you have with yourself, you have to be honest and say, look, a charity starts at home. You got to take good care of yourself. So a lot of these exercises and these things I'm talking about today are ways for you to get a better relationship with yourself and keep it there and keep it solid. Because we all know on my one to 10 scale, if you're a nine or a 10, you're going to have a much better day than if it's a one or a two in terms of your attitude with things. Cause you're just going to feel you can take on life. Life is a big series of like a roller coaster. It's all up and down. It's never all up or all down. Everybody wants to be up here, but when you're down here, it sucks. You want to be up high again. And when you get up high, that's great. But guess what? All the lessons are learned when you're down low. That's when you, when nobody calls you back. When you're up high, everybody's your best friend and they return your calls and they're all over you. But down here is where you learn the lessons. So it's really important. And I think as an example about the relationship we have with ourselves, I'm going to Reno, one of the gambling places in Nevada, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago with my buddy. And we're playing slot machines and blackjack and craps and things like this. And, and he's like over at the slot machine and he's like winning all this money. And these quarters are just crashing down. He put a quarter in and he gets a thousand dollars. Well, that's a lot of quarters that are crashing down and the lights are flashing and he's going like this, Brooker, Brooker, I won. So I walk over, I stand to him next to him on the machine and he goes, I'm buying dinner tonight. And I went, great. And so it just kept crashing. It just seemed like forever, all these quarters filling this huge tray and stuff. And as I'm looking at him, I'm thinking to myself, you know, I'm really happy. His name was Rand. I go, I'm really happy for you, but I'd be just a teeny bit happier if it was me. I thought I couldn't, you can't say that to anybody, but it's the truth. I just would have been happier if it was me. So it's so important. And again, back to how you let somebody determine your worth. And so let me give you an example. So here's a $20 bill. Now, if I was in person, this has got Andrew Jackson on the front of it. If I was in person, I would like hand it right through and I'd say, would you take this $20 bill if I just gave it to you? And when I do that in person, most people raise their hand. And so I say, okay, so would you take it? They say, yeah. So if I do this, if I crunch it up like that and say, would you take it? Yep, most people say they would. If I take it, put it on the ground, stomp on it with my feet, just mash it as best I can, smooth it out again. And then I say to those same people, would you take this $20 bill? It's now smoothed out. Yep, most people would take it, right? So then my question is, if I look at Andrew Jackson and I say, listen, Andrew Jackson, I want to tell you something. You're worthless. You, you actually don't have any point of even being on this earth. In fact, I'm not even sure why you're on this worth because you're a no good piece of junk. And Andrew Jackson would look back at me. He'd say, well, let me tell you something, Mr. Speaker, man. You can say whatever you want to me, but whatever you say, I'm still worth 20 bucks. And he would be right. And so my question is, 
Why do you let somebody crush you, step on you, tell you you're worthless, tell you you don't deserve to be on this planet, or worst of all, just devalue you from 20 to 15 to 10 to 5 to the worst of all zero and let them get away with it? I'll tell you how you avoid that. You get gratitude in your life. You keep focusing on all your blessings and abundance. You will have some great Teflon and some great armor against something like that. It makes such a big difference because you're constantly focusing on what did I say I was going to say several times? Gratitude turns what you have into enough. It's so, so very important. So that's about the relationship with yourself. Your talent, so important. Make your strengths productive. Make your weaknesses irrelevant. I can't tell you how important that is. What is your talent? If somebody's five foot one and 125 pounds, a young man, and he wants to be a quarterback in the NFL, the football, it's not going to happen, but he may want to be a jockey. You know, maybe that's a good thing for him. He can get out there and do that. But in the, on the other hand, there's just find out what that talent is. Make your talents or make your weak, excuse me, make your strengths productive, make your weaknesses irrelevant. Don't, I can't, I can speak to thousands of people, but I can't draw a circle. It's okay. I'm not going to spend all my time to go to art class to learn how to draw a circle. I'm going to focus on my strengths. There's many things you can't teach. And I think a, a few of them are, I just wrote down experience, confidence, common sense, somebody that's a know-it-all. Gosh, one of my least kind of people. There's like know-it-alls and there's lifelong learners. I love lifelong learners. Some that doesn't want to learn as an example. You can't teach someone to be grateful, have a work ethic, get self-esteem, get a personality, a sense of humor, or a giving mindset. Sometimes we just have a stamp on our forehead and it's what we are. And it's so important. I don't know how many of you have ever done jury duty. I did jury duty one year and there's 12 people and nobody speaks to each other the entire time for this case. And it was assault with a deadly weapon. So you never say anything. And I was wearing like just jeans and a sweatshirt. And so I watched the trial. We just, I look at the other people. We just smile. You can't say anything. When the trial's over, we go into the jury room and the bailiff comes in and he says, you know, now here's the thing you need to do. You need to elect the foreman and then you need to come and get any evidence you need. And then you need to take an initial polling of the, the, the 12 of you to see what the verdict is, guilty or not guilty. So everybody looks at each other. Nobody's ever spoken. And then the door closes. 10 of the 11 people point to me and they go, we want you to be the foreman. <laughs> <laughs> fine my name is david brooke and i got up there and i said okay great this is going to be we're going to take this what's your name here let's do our initial vote that just was my stamp i've just been the one that's general i'm the pilot i'm the one that's the store manager i'm the one that's kind of out front but that doesn't mean you can't pivot occasionally in your life when i was 12 i wanted to play drums and i thought that's all i want to do is play drums and so they said put down number two I don't have a number two. They put it down anyway. So I put down number, I put number two is trombone for music class. So they're taking all these people and finding out these instruments. So drums, number one, trombone, number two. And then I put David Brooke, my address and all this kind of thing. I wait in line. I go up to the guy that's the, the guy that's testing everybody on all this sort of stuff. And he says, okay, here, do this. And takes it like a pencil and he like tap and he goes tap, 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 tap. And he goes, now do that. And so I went like this and did as best I could. Mm -hmm. He goes, yeah, okay, great. Trombone for this boy uh, over to that table over there, sir. And so clearly I wasn't meant to be a drummer. So you got to figure out what it is, but maybe make your, make your strengths productive, make your weaknesses irrelevant. And once you've got your talent down, figure out what you're passionate about. So very important. I mean, and people wonder what you're very passionate about gratitude, David, what should I do? Well, what would you do if you had a million dollars a day? What did you want to do when you grew up and you, when you were a kid and you wanted to be a, I'm going to be this when I grow up. Or if you did something for free where you didn't get paid for it, what would you do and do it gladly without even getting any money? Those are all things that are really important. And plus it's never too late. I, I can't, I don't know the ages of all of you, of course, but I started being a speaker nine years ago at 62. And I'm looking at people that are my heroes, like Ray Kroc, who started McDonald's at 55 and John Hausman got an Academy Award at 71 and Mary Kay Ash, Sam Walton started Walmart at 45. And my hero of all heroes, Colonel Sanders for KFC started KFC at 63 years old. So it's never too late and you just can't give up. It's just so, so important. In fact, when I quit Lowe's, I was managing a, a store for Lowe's and uh, as a store manager in a, the home improvement chain. And so I decided, I've been talking about being a speaker. It says in the video, since I was 19 years old. And so I need to do this. I got to quit screwing around here because I promised myself I'd do it, but life kind of got in the way. So as I'm, as I'm doing that one day, I quit December 27th, 2013. And I come home, Connor, my youngest son is now 17. He says, what are you doing home? 
And I said, um, I quit. He goes, what do you mean you quit? And I went, I, he goes, you quit Lowe's? And I went, yeah. And he goes, well, uh, you quit being a store manager? And I go, yeah. And he goes, well, what are you going to do now? And I said, well, I'm going to be a speaker. And so he looks up from the couch. He looks at me and he goes, well, that's just super dad. I wasn't really expecting that. And he says, I have a question for you. What are we going to do for food? And I went, yeah, God, good question. But you just can't give up. And I've been so enjoying this ever since. And so finally, find yourself, get a great, great relationship with yourself, figure out your talent, figure out what you're passionate about. And then those three things will probably lead to what your purpose is. So, so very important. There's all these examples of people, what happens to them when they lost their purpose. Very famous coach at Alabama, Bear Bryant. He retired at like, I don't know how old, 70 or something like that from winning four national championships at Alabama. He passes away six months later. Joe Paterno gets fired at Penn State. He passes away like three months later. Andy Rooney was on 60 Minutes. He went into, I think it's almost his 90s. He does his last uh, episode on 60 Minutes and like oh, just a few months later he passed away so and they had a recent study they said people with a perfect purpose lived an average of seven years longer than people with no purpose and sometimes just becoming you can be your purpose and your life your life's purpose is what you say it is and so it's like nobody else except for you is the person that can determine that so but if, if you're asking yourself what can my purpose be ask yourself a question what what problem in the world could i solve and what could i what could i make a difference and what did i always want to do some of those things I mentioned earlier are very, very important, but I was on a podcast one day and the, the person says to me, um, you know, what are the two most important days of your life? And I said, well, that's simple. I said today and tomorrow, because we've all heard that because yesterday's gone. Today is important. I'm here talking to hr.com and tomorrow isn't here yet, but I'm looking forward to tomorrow too. And he goes, okay, well, that's fine. He goes, but I think something differently. And he, I go, why? What do you think the two most important days are? And he said, I think the two most important days of your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. I thought, wow. I actually had to stop and think about that for a while. It just really makes a difference. But it's, it's really when you find that purpose. But I think there's something about that sequence of events. Get a great relationship with yourself. Figure out what your passion is or your, uh, your um, talent is rather, and then figure out what your passion is. And then it'll lead you to a purpose. And I think ultimately, everybody I think wants to, to, to figure out what their purpose is. I think we're hardwired to figure out what our purpose is or why we're here. We're here for a finite amount of time. It's average life expectancy now is 74, 75, something like that. But it doesn't mean that you aren't going to be able to pivot along the way. There was a coach that at a, at a high school, excuse me, a college in Oregon, a basketball coach named Ralph Miller. And he won like 700 wins and 200 losses. And he'd been like the winningest coach of all time. And it was really interesting. And the announcer comes up and puts a microphone in his, his uh, face. And he says to him, uh, coach Miller, I'm kind of curious. Uh, you win 723 games. You lost 152. How do you feel about the fact you never made it to the final four? And he looks at the guy and he goes, Hey, some things just don't work out like we planned. And so, you know, sometimes things don't work out like we plan. You just never know. So anyway, by the way, one quick exercise too. I want to just kind of pull the audience. Do me a favor. Take down this cell number. This is my text number. 206-371-8309. 206-371-8309. Text me and tell me what's the number one thing you're grateful for. It could be the most important thing in your life, your, your spouse, your help, whatever it might be. I like to see, kind of get a flavor from everybody. So 206-371-8309 and just text me what the number one thing is that you're grateful for. And as we move on to that, I'm going to talk a little bit about communicating and interacting with gratitude. We're all in the work world. And I will tell you the golden rule, the definition of the golden rule, the golden rule is the ethical principle of treating other people as oneself would prefer to be treated. That's according to, to Webster. So uh, 206-371-8309. 206-371-8309. Number one thing you're grateful for. But I, I would like you to consider this, and that is, is how you say things to people and how you ask somebody to do something. I had a lot of success at Nordstrom and Lowe's, and so we're all in the work world. Kathy and I were talking about, we're, of course, being more remote now on our computers and so forth. But whether it's email or text or anything, it just still comes back down to how you ask somebody to do something. And I think for my experience at Nordstrom and Lowe's, 
uh, I noticed, I would always ask people, my number one takeaway go-to thing was, would you do me a favor when you take, instead of demanding somebody that you work for them? And I'd say, would you do me a favor? Or it would mean a lot to me if you could take care of something. When you have a moment, could you do this? Would you mind? Will you please? Any of those types of things make such a big difference. And so think about that for a moment, how you ask people to do stuff, because it really makes a big difference. And, and sometimes just by thinking that and putting it in the right way, um, it makes a big difference too. So, all right. So moving, just moving along here, I'm going to wrap up in about five minutes. So I'm going to kind of head out, but I or finish up, but I just want to mention too, that this whole idea of how you ask somebody about something instead of don't ever say you should, you have to, you need to, or you gotta, I hear that all the time. People, you have to do this. You need to do this. It's just crazy with the people that do things like that or say things like that. But a word that I love, little gratitude tip here is consider. It's such a great word. Would you consider this? If somebody says, you need to read this book, you have to do this, you got to do that. You know, and just the minute somebody says, you have to do this, or actually my favorite of all is you should. The minute like people come up to me after my speech and, you know, you should talk about this. And I go, well, um, so uh, when you're, you're a speaker too, how's that work when you're speaking? Oh, you're not a speaker. Oh, great. But there's something about you should, that just doesn't seem to, to have people pay as much attention to it too. So it makes a big difference. So how you ask somebody is really, really nice. Uh, it makes a big difference too. So a um, couple of things I wanted to mention too, and then I'm going to, like I said, get wrapped up here and let you go. Um, the coaching model, they did a survey years ago about what people are looking for in a job. And in 1983, the number one things that people wanted, there's 94, I guess, appreciation, and recognition. Number two is help with personal problems. And then number three was being in on the no. And so, so, so important. And that's what they want. But now they did the same survey. And you know what they found out now? Number three was responsibilities. Number two was goals. And guess what number one was? Purpose. And we just finished talking about that. It's so, so very important. And uh, that whole purpose and why we're here, why would they say all these people work for Wikipedia for free and they don't even get paid for it, but they just have such a sense of purpose that really makes a big difference. So, all right, one, a uh, couple more things, then I'll get wrapped up here and we'll get out at the top of the hour. Um, listen to learn and then learn to listen and then listen to learn. If you learn to listen, people don't listen very well. If you learn to listen and then you listen to learn, it's amazing what you're going to find out. So this is one of these couple of word phrases that if you think of, if you take away nothing from my talk today, and I hope you take away a lot of things, um, these two, three word phrases, when you're talking to somebody, instead of injecting yourself into their conversation and saying about what something, how it impacts you, use these two, three word phrases. You'll have more friends that you'll know what to do with. And the two phrases are, tell me more, number one, and then what is number two. When you're talking to somebody if you go and you say, tell me more, and then they keep telling you, and then you say, tell me more, and then they tell you more stuff. We went on our trip. Oh, well, tell me more. Okay, that's great. And then what happened after that? And then what? You will have so many friends because people don't do that. People just interject themselves into the conversation all the time. Oh, we went to Hawaii. Oh, that's funny. We went to Hawaii too. The last time we were in Hawaii, I go, oh man, you're not listening. Let the person finish. If you went to Hawaii, that's fantastic, but let them finish. And then you can say now when it's your turn. Yeah. We went to Hawaii too, as a matter of fact, too. So, so important, but tell me more. And then what, again, it's just amazing. You, you, I, as I said, I, I'm not joking. You'll have more friends that you know what to do with. So, all right. A couple of things here. Meditation. I mentioned some of the things to take good care of yourself. Write in a gratitude journal. Get your sleep. Drink lots of water. Hang out with positive people. Get your exercise. Um, take your nutrient, your supplements. I take a lot of supplements. And as I said, drink a lot of water too. All those things can make a really, really big difference. But one of the huge things is meditation. I found this out the other day and I thought it was absolutely amazing. The human body can go three weeks without food, three days without water three minutes without oxygen and only three seconds without a thought going through your brain. So your poor brain is just inundated all day long. And I've often thought, imagine if you could interview your brain and say, Mr. Brain, what do you think? And he'd go, give me a break. This person is driving me nuts. There's too many thoughts here. Well, meditation, I call it extreme self-care can make such a big difference. So I highly recommend starting the meditation practice. It doesn't have to be a ton of time. It can be 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever, that makes such a big difference. So, okay, a couple more things here. Um, people ask me all the time, how can I get more gratitude in my life? And so I put the gratitude journal in the text, uh, in the chat rather. And then if you're 
if you can text this, I do a Monday morning video. Every Monday morning, I send out a 60 second video and it's to start your week off right. And it goes everywhere that goes out to about 10,000 people. If you'd like to get that, grab your phones and go to your text. And the number you text is 22828. That's 22828. And then in the message box, you type in gratitude guy and that will get you the the uh, Monday morning minute. So 22828 is the text number and the text message is gratitude guy, all one word. And that's, yeah, and you just put, you do that in your text in your phone, that'll take care of it. And then for anybody that wants to get a hold of me, you can reach me on my website, which is thatgratitudeguy.com or email david at thatgratitudeguy.com. And also, also people ask me too, do you have an app? You know, like I have, I like the gratitude, yes, all one word. Uh, and yes, it does post on uh, LinkedIn, Lucy, as well. Uh, and I do have an app. It's called Goya Connect, and it's really a neat app. And it's it's way you can get a daily rating of your well-being. You can make entries electronically if you prefer an app versus a gratitude journal. And then you have daily access to yours truly for any questions, thoughts, help, support you might need from me. And that is available too. And that is just for $10 a month. So if you're interested in the the uh, gratitude app, just send me an email at david at that gratitude guy.com and I will take care of that. So that is it, everybody. I wish you absolutely the best and please give gratitude a try. It makes such a difference. It changed my life. It can change yours too. And now back to hr.com. Thank you all so much. Thank you. This concludes our webcast today. I would like to thank our wonderful presenter, David Brooke and all of you for joining us. If you joined late and would like to view this webcast again, the recording will be available on uh, hr.com in our archives later today. If you're looking for your educational credit, that will appear in your account within two business days, and we also send out an email with the credit information. Please take a few moments and fill out the webcast survey that's going to pop up on your screen. We really appreciate your feedback. Let us know how you love David's presentation today. This concludes our webcast. Enjoy the rest of the event.